So now uh, <clears throat> we're going to transition into uh, the next talk by Dr. Birch, uh, who's a professor of orthopedic surgery at uh, UCSF. Uh, uh, he's a, really an expert when it comes to navigation as well as uh, laterals uh, or all lifts, actually. And uh, so he's going to uh, be giving a talk on enabling technology uh, navigation. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, thanks to the Seattle uh, Science Foundation for inviting me. And thanks to Dr. Park and Dr. Hofstetter. Um, so yeah, this, this uh, talk is really a, an overview of, um, of navigation. And um, um, I'm also from Toronto, so you'll have to uh, excuse my, my accent as well. So uh, in terms of the overview, so we're going to talk about application of navigation and then the impact on MIS, but really, hopefully the, the overview of navigation will kind of lead into that impact on, on what we can do with MIS procedures. And then uh, talk a little bit about the limitations of spinal navigation as it as it's in a cur current state today. So really, navigation is part of this whole um, sort of enabling technology or computer assisted surgery suite, um, and it really is is meant to drive the accuracy of the surgical technique, which hopefully will improve our outcomes and quality of care, and um, you know decrease the cost of care as well. And it's. It's amazing, it's, it's kind of this low hanging fruit. Um, and it's the, not, not everybody has, uh, has adopted it, but um, it really does, when you learn how to use it, uh, make any procedure, um, I think, a lot easier. But the, the key here is realizing that it's a tool and it's a technique. Um, if you don't know how to use it, if you don't address the, um, the tips and tricks of, of how to really use the technique, it can be a very expensive uh, paperweight. It's, uh, and so you have to learn how to use this if you're going to um, embrace it. And if you do uh, embrace it, it becomes very uh, predictable. Um, and the predictability is what I think we all strive for in, in surgery. Uh, we, nobody wants to get punched in the face in surgery. Um, nobody gets up in the morning and says, hey, I'm going to miss uh, three to five pedicles today. And, and that just makes the case, uh, you know, um, go south. So that's what navigation is to me. It's, it's predictable. And if the anatomy is challenging, the efficiency, the accuracy, and the predictability comes through. And in terms of MIS, um, you know, we can talk about using guide wireless uh, percutaneous screws. Uh, you can think about improved pedicle fill, um, uh, getting optimized pedicle fill. In deformity surgery, we can you think about going through a fusion mass with, with ease, uh, designing a four rod construct, SAI screws are easy. And as, as Timur uh, pointed out, th th these, this whole suite avoids radiation to the surgeon, but then we can get into customized things like osteotomy planning, uh, custom implant um, implantation. And then uh, I'll talk a little bit about MR merge technology, which is not FDA approved. Um, and so there's lots of different things that we can use navigation for other than just putting in a screw. And I use this as an example. Here's a, a fairly complex uh, you know, spinal deformity. But if you learn how to use the technique, this uh, case uh, in implanting screws into this case becomes as easy as a degenerative case because um, you know you can see the bone, you can see the channels that you need to place the screws through. And navigation really is a is an evolution, and it's continuing to evolve. But whether you say, "Hey, I'm going to like assess my uh, screws or implants through an X-ray or fluoroscopy or through a navigation system," I mean that's really what we've been doing for the last uh, you know 40 years. And it really is time to evolve. As way of a background, um, navigation is all about registration. And what registration means is uh, aligning coordinate system of a frame to the patient. And in the past, we used to have to bolt the frame to the patient and we're a little bit more sophisticated now. And really what it is, it's aligning the physical space, which is the patient, the image space, which is the scan, and then the tracker space, uh, which is either uh, a robotic arm or a navigated tool or, or, or uh, you know, what, what uh, Timur was talking about. And that, that process of doing that, aligning those coordinate systems is registration. And that's really the art of, um, of navigation. You have to obtain registration and then the, the trick is to maintain it so you don't, don't bump the reference frame or you know, impose segmental um, uh, instability. 
So here the, the, the image coordinates as an example would be in the system. Then you have the physical space coordinate system, typically through a camera system or through a robotic arm. And then you have fiducials placed on the patient, either on the skin or actually hard mounted into bone. And that's really a marker based pair point registration um, where we're re reading the, uh, the uh, information off of this, uh, uh, off this uh, tracker. And so the, the camera can see the, uh, the, the frame on the patient, they can see the, uh, cord, the, the eyes on the, on the imaging system, and, it, and um, through a, uh, a, a linear transformation or rotational transformation, those uh, coordinate systems are, are aligned. But in that, in obtaining the image, in obtaining the registration, there's always going to be an intrinsic error into the system. And uh, there's different, there's kind of three common types, but these common errors are small. So you have to know what it is within the system that you're using, but it's typically uh, very low. Whereas when we as surgeons, you know, uh, jump up to the plate, we start to introduce extrinsic errors. And so things like we don't patient, put the patient in the right position, we use the wrong uh, image quality or the wrong radiation exposure. Um, and, and, and these errors become fairly gross. They're so greater than five millimeters. And really the two big, big ones that you have to learn how to avoid or get around when you're learning navigation is line of sight, so reference frame location, and then reference frame stability. If you learn those two things in the line of sight, where you put the reference frame is different for different uh, procedures. Typically in an MIS procedure, the, um, the uh, reference frame goes in the very lateral aspect of the uh, iliac crest in a very oblique angle and that gets it away from everything. There's also a different uh, position you can put the reference frame in sort of going from medial to lateral through the iliac crest. But in an osteoporotic patient, I like to put the reference frame basically through the iliac crest across the SI joint and it, um, it creates a very stable um, uh, site for the, for the reference frame. Now, navigation changes your workflow. And again, this is part of the technique and you have to learn how it's gonna change your workflow. You, you don't want to introduce segmental instability uh, into the system. And uh, we adopted drilling and tapping, which is a very uh, low pressure type of phenomenon when you're, uh, when you're, uh, when you're uh, inserting a, a screw or an implant uh, compared to uh, you know, malleting the patient where the, the patient moves up and down and not only would you get plastic deformation, but you get elastic deformation. The other thing that you have to learn how to do is use the uh, user interface with the system. There's all kinds of different tools. There's probes, drill guides, taps, there's osteotomes, et cetera, et cetera. And there's all the lateral cages that you can, you can put in and it becomes overwhelming. And as a surgeon, you can't do that on, on your own. And so you need to build a team, somebody who's there consistently with you. You essentially need a co-pilot in the operating room. And if you build a co-pilot or build a team that has a, has a good co-pilot, then the, the surgery becomes pretty relaxed. So here's some, just some screenshots. Obviously the, the classic just uh, drilling and tapping, you get these, uh, you know, the cross-sectional view, you get the, uh, the sagittal view, which is great for, for placing screws. So whether it's open or MIS, it doesn't matter. These are your kind of workhorse uh, images. Uh, S SAI screws. Now I put this up because we're, we're navigating a projection here. And one of the things you can do with a navigation system is you can save this projection and this will stay on the on the uh, on the image and that's essentially your virtual k wire or guide wire and so you don't need a guide wire you can take this tool out and you can navigate another tool back um, onto this uh, trajectory and you can place a, a screw uh, or a tap and then a, and then a screw afterwards and that virtual uh, k wire is kind of the nice thing about navigation when we're doing uh, mis Here's an example of just drilling and tapping some uh, upper cervical um, anatomy. And it really kind of gets the accuracy of it. We published a paper on subaxial pedicle screws a while back and um, had a very high, um, high success rate and high accuracy rate um, with uh, in, in some very uh, narrow and, and challenging anatomy. So that the systems inherently are accurate if you remove the extrinsic um, errors that we as surgeons tend to introduce. You don't necessarily need to use the system just for placing screws. 
but we can, uh, this is an example of looking at the foramen. And so you can use, you can wander through the anatomy and look at, uh, look for stenosis. Obviously you can put in uh, implants. So uh, a, a T-lift cage or a, P a PLIF cage, you can put in uh, lateral cages. And then here's an example of uh, um, image to image registration where I matched the um, uh, intraoperative uh, uh, scan with uh, the patient's MR scan and I uh, was able to navigate uh, around, uh, around the tumor. So now I'm, instead of navigating off the, uh, the uh, intraop uh, 3D fluoroscopy scan, I'm actually now navigating off the patient's uh, MRI intraoperatively. Here's an example of uh, um, performing osteotomies. And again, this is about um, placing virtual um, uh, wedges uh, or osteotomies or a virtual plan intraoperatively. So the patient had a um, positive sagittal balance. Uh, I wanted to do an osteotomy through the fusion mass. And so what we can do is we can, I calculated that I needed a 20 degree um, uh, osteotomy and I, uh, you're able to drop this 20 degree wedge onto the patient's um, scan, and then we can navigate around this wedge. So that will stay there. We can navigate around the wedge. And then um, once I know that I've cut uh, the outside uh, angles here, I know that I've got my 20 degree um, osteotomy performed. And with new tools like the Sonopet or the, um, or the Mysonics, we can become very, very accurate with our, with our cuts. Um, and uh, reproduce our pre-op plan intraoperatively, and hopefully that will, um, you know, go into the uh, the, the post-op uh, phase of improved um, uh, of, uh, outcomes. So, what about MIS? I mean, it's it's kind of a um, uh, a natural transition. This is a 65-year-old lady with um, multi-level uh, uh, instability and, and degenerative disc disease with with leg pain. Uh, we navigated the uh, anti psoas uh, cages here, um, and really what I'm trying to show here is that this, uh, th this view where you have a, a, a cross-sectional view allows you to determine the, the length of your screws, and obviously the, uh, you can plan the trajectory of your screws to get into a real uh, lateral to medial construct um, and uh, intraoperative uh, fluoroscopy image here just to demonstrate the, uh, the uh, accuracy of it. Um, and uh, there's the construct. So in terms of the limitations of, of navigation, I, I want everybody to kind of think about the intrinsic errors with any navigation system, but that error is small. The errors really occur from our uh, surgeons um, not performing the technique properly. And those are the most common, and those are the things that really make the system uh, uh, feel in inaccurate, uh, but uh, you can overcome those. The one thing that uh, I'd say that we still have limitations to navigation is the segmental motion, and that requires an additional scan. So if you do an osteotomy before you put in your screws, you're going to have to take an additional scan to recalibrate the registration. And that uh, really gets the workflow changes to avoid uh, the segmental motion. And in summary, I think that one of the big things that's lost in a lot of this technology stuff is that you need other people in the operating room with, with, with us. There's, there's a burden of technology. And when, with that technology we bring in, we need more people to help us. And so you have to build a consistent team. But I do think that the above strategies augment the skills of a surgeon um, you know, to allow us to do MIS or, or, uh, or complex uh, procedures uh, efficiently and probably more predictably than we can uh, without the use of these uh, techniques. Thank you. Shane, that was a great talk. Can I ask you uh, two questions? One, um, it, it seems like you navigate quite a bit. Uh, do you, is it 100% of your practice or are there certain cases you don't navigate? Uh, and have you um, noticed, uh, you know, assuming you were not navigating before and converted navigation, any time efficiencies, uh, plus or minus uh, with use of navigation? So, yeah, I, I don't uh, navigate micro disks. Um, but I pretty much, I'm joking. I, I mean, I navigate pretty much everything, um, not decompressions, but it really gets down to the predictability of it. Um, you know, placing the reference frame is very efficient, bringing in the arm or bringing in the, the other, you know, the system and spinning is, is very, um, very efficient now. It's only a few minutes. 
But that time is very predictable. And um, that predictability uh, is worth a lot to me. And so I, I pretty much navigate everything from the simplest uh, procedures to the most complex. And the key here is, is if you're gonna learn how to use navigation, start with the easy stuff and then the complex stuff becomes easy. That's what I was trying to show with that early uh, case uh, that I did, that complex kind of deformity. And in terms of um, you know, efficiency and in building the efficiency, you just have to use it um, you know, a, a lot to build up the, um, the efficiency because you, you need other people to help you. You, you, you can't just be a one man show. So that the team needs the whole interoperative team needs to learn how to to do this over and over and over again, and the, the, I think that's how you build the efficiency. Yeah, no. So I the the reason why I ask is that we've had the same sort of I think uh, model at our institution. We've converted from you know from ten years ago not navigating very much to navigating almost everything now, and we've seen time efficiency. And there's literature that suggests time efficiency will will occur. When uh, again, it's a team-based approach. When everybody's aware of it, everybody's familiar. You just have to get over that initial hurdle, where there'll, there'll be some time loss at the beginning. And uh, but I, I think most people who use navigation start to convert and then use it for everything, just because of that consistency and safety issue. So, yeah, I think that rather than thinking of like the efficiency as a case-by-case -case basis, you might want to say, if I took a, a month, of my you know, a month of cases, and I you know. A bunch of them were, were complex. You may not save really any time on the on the uh, easy stuff, but you're going to save a whole bunch of time on the complex stuff. So that I think you, if you averaged it out, and it's hard to do that study, but um, the, the 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 challenging anatomy becomes easy, and that's where the where the efficiency really comes in. That was an awesome talk. Really enjoyed it. Um, you know. As an expert, as you you know, as you are in navigation, uh, do you think for our audience here, you have um, you know little tricks? Because as you mentioned briefly in the talk, when navigation goes wrong, it typically goes wrong really badly. Uh, in terms of, uh, it's not off a millimeter, but it's off like you know, like an inch or so. Um, and uh, tell us a little bit of a couple of your tricks how you quality control in the OR. Because the thing is, you know, we, you know, just uh, Dr. Wang gave a talk about that we become more and more cobots. You know, we kind of like we work together with, with, with technology. It doesn't replace us. Navigation is one of these technologies that does that. So tell us, you know, your tricks, your maneuvers. You know, before you put a screw in blindly, uh, what do you do to make sure that it's not going into some, you know, area? Yeah. Where... That's a great question. So. I... Like Dave, Dave Pauly, who who navigates, used to use or does use the term, you know, trust and and verify, um, and and so what he means by that is that you still have to use your own knowledge of the anatomy, and if it looks like it's completely off, then don't you know you don't don't follow it blindly. Um, the if you feel like somebody's knocked the reference frame, which is usually the, the, the number one way that the registration goes off and the inaccuracy is introduced into the system, is that you can take a, a tool and, and uh, identify known anatomy. And if that known anatomy is still accurate based on the, on the navigation uh, screen, then you, you're fairly sure that the registration is still on. So I'll take um, the, the planar probe and put it onto a spinous process. And if it's lateral or, or, uh, or you know, distal to that spinous process, then I know I have to re-spin. Um, and so that's just kind of like doing a point to point kind of uh, check uh, if I feel like the registration's off. Um, you know, one of the things is we, you get into problems if you're navigating too far away from the, from the frame. And uh, it's, I often will use, uh, if I'm doing a longer, like a, doing a deformity, I'll use two reference frames. Um, but I think that the, the number, the, the, the biggest uh, technique here is learning where to put that reference frame so it doesn't get in your way. Um, and it really, it, it really um, comes into play in MIS. So making sure that your hand's not gonna constantly bang into the reference frame. And so knowing where to put that ref reference frame is is the key because if you're not if you're not getting into line of sight issues or your hand's not going to bang the reference frame, the registration system will, will or the registration will stay. And once there, and if the registration doesn't get knocked knocked out of play, 
then the accuracy is, is you know, exceptional. 